matrix representation theorem. So the purpose of this slide is this. Uh, two slides ago, two slides ago, we discussed with you matrix type linear maps, two of them. There was a type one, which effectively is simply a matrix multiplication. And there was type 2, which was a significant development, but still, essentially, it's a matrix multiplication. Now, matrix representation theorem, it tells you that actually every linear map is of this type. So those two linear maps we discussed with you two slides ago, and the example I just did on the previous slide, it's that they are so fundamental that every other linear map is of the same type. It's matrix type linear map. There's no any other linear maps but the matrix type linear maps. I'm lying a little bit. Slightly, I'm lying a little bit. I'll tell you where I'm lying because the, the, the world cannot be that dull. There might be some very beautiful examples which are not matrix type. Otherwise, it's just, there's no reason to do anything about linear maps. But I'm not lying that far. And especially in your world, every linear map would be matrix type linear map. So again, I recall for you that F uh, it's either of these three number fields. So here's my theorem. It says this. If I have a linear map between n tuples and m tuples, it's not every linear map, of course. We have plenty of other linear maps which maps different types of vector spaces. But for this particular set of vector spaces, for the n tuples and m tuples, the result is straight here. It's, if I have a linear map like that, then there will always be a matrix. There will always be a matrix, m columns, n rows, such that such a linear map is a matrix type linear map of the first type. Here's a proof. I'll fix a basis and in this space, the basis is quite natural choice. We have a natural choice of a basis. That's what we call standard basis. Uh, so here we go. If I take a vector with n components from this vector space, For such a vector, I will, I will come up with the natural representation with respect to my basis. Here it is, x1 times e1, x2 times e2, plus maybe the others xn times en. If I now apply my linear map to my vector x, because it's a linear map, I can use the linearity and convert this t of x into the expression like this, x uh, times t of e1, x2 times t of e2, xn times t of en, that's one of the first properties of the linear maps we discussed with you. And here what I'm going to say now. These vectors, t of e1, t of e2, t of en, they all, because t maps fn into fm, they're all from here. They're all m tuples. Each of these vectors individually, they m tuples. What I'm going to present right now, I'm going to present the components of these vectors. It will be lengthy writing, but it's, we have to do it. There's no way, there's no any other way to avoid this. For each of these vectors, I'm going to present their components. And because we have n vectors, and each vector individually will have m components, I will need m times n notations. So I'm going to use the matrix notation. Here we go. T of E1, I'm going to give the name to the components with the little a letter. I'm going to change the first index, but the second index will be attached to this E1 thing. So here's my components for the T of E1. And here's my components for T of E2. You see, the first index varies across the components, but the second index is linked to E2 vector here. Other vectors have similar structured components. The last one, En, here they are. Now, if I combine this, let me just lift this up just a little bit. Now, look what happens. My T of X 
is the linear combination of, this, of these vectors. If you linearly combine these vectors the way we combine n tuples with the coefficients x1, x2, xn, it will be one single m tuple. And the first component in this m tuple will be linear combination of the first components across here. Second component will be linear combination of the second components across here. The last mth component will be the linear combination of the components across here. Here it is. It's a lengthy combination, but once we have to write this. So here's my linear combination of the, comp of the first components with the coefficients x1, x2, xm. So here in this row, we see second index varies because set second index is the one which is attached to the index of the E vector. And the first index is a, the one which stays fixed because the index of the component. Here's my linear combination of the second components. A21, X1, A22, X2, A2N, Xn. Many other components like this. The last one will be, here's my linear combination, A M1, X1, A M2, X2, A M N, X N. In this one, I claim the expression like that. The expression like that. I claim this is effectively a matrix multiplication of the matrix where the first row will be a, a, a coefficients from this line. Second row will be A coefficients from this line. Last row will be A coefficients from this line. Here it is. A11, A12, A21, A22, A2N, A1, AM2, AM1. AMN, sorry, and that's my x1, x2, xn vector. And that's why my T action effectively as the matrix multiplication.